Hello, so our starters today, we're going to go back and look at um, what we did to do with money um, a couple of weeks ago. So we're looking at rates of pay and I've sort of vaguely highlighted the important words in this question because we need to know what these mean. Okay, Chris's normal hourly rate of pay is £9 per hour. So this is his normal hourly rate. OK, so if Chris works a normal hour, he gets paid nine pounds. OK, he gets paid double time for any overtime that he works. OK, so double time means he gets paid twice as much for each hour as he normally would if he's working any overtime hours. So they would be hours that are beyond what he normally works in a week or they might be hours maybe that are at a night time or very early morning or on a bank holiday or something like that. Okay, so calculate his pay for a week when he works 35 hours at his basic rate and seven hours overtime. Okay, so we've got basic is 35 hours, overtime is seven hours. OK, now his basic rate of pay we found here is £9 an hour. So for his basic pay, we'll be working out 35 times £9. For his overtime, he's working seven hours, but at double time. So that means for every hour of overtime that he works, he gets paid twice as much as he would normally. So he's getting two times £9 for each of those hours. OK, so you can see what we're working out there is 7 times 18. OK, so it's OK to use a, a calculator or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, 35 times 9, 5, 9 is a 45. 3, 9 is 27, add 4 is 31. And then 18 times 7 or 14 times 9, it's the same thing. 8, 7 is a 56. 177 add 5 is 12, so 126 for that. And so the total amount that he would get paid for those 35 normal hours and 7 hours overtime is 5 and 6 is 11, 1 and 2 is 3, add the 1 makes 4, 3 and 1 is 4, so his total for the week would be £441. Okay, next question. Share £173 equally between four people. How much money does each person get? Well, I would honestly just do a straight divide for this one. OK, so four into one doesn't go. Four into 17 goes four times with. Uh, sorry, four into 17 goes four times with one left over because four fours are 16. Four into 13 goes three times, three fours are 12, so we've got one left over. But look, we've got nothing to carry it on to, okay? But remember that 173 is exactly the same as 173.0. So now, remember and keep your points in line, four into 10 goes twice, remainder two, so we're gonna need another zero. And then four into 20 goes five times, so the answer is right there at the top, 43. Pounds 25. Okay. So where we're up to with our week's work is that we've looked at names and types of polygons and regular and irregular ones. We've looked at triangles and we've looked at squares and rectangles. So today we're looking at other kinds of quadrilaterals. Other quadrilaterals. Other what? So what is a quadrilateral? Can you remember um, from earlier on in the week? So quadrilaterals are, how many sides do they have? So it's four-sided polygons, okay? Which means they are flat shapes, they're two-dimensional, and they have four straight sides, okay? So apart from looking at squares and rectangles that we've already considered. We've got some other quadrilaterals and I'm just, I've got some clues here. 
I'm going to let you have a think about these ones. Okay, so take a moment, pause this if you want. What I've done is put a clue in the shape of the quadrilateral. Okay, so first one, the purple one. Let's have a look here. Um, I've written that people always seem to find it amusing to say the name of this quadrilateral. I would say in all my years teaching, generally speaking, whenever I mention this kind of quadrilateral, people say it out loud and they say it over and over again. And can you remember what it is or do you know what it's called? Okay, see if you want to say it out loud when I write it down. Parallelogram. And generally what happens when I say that in a class is everybody starts going parallelogram, 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 parallelogram. And some people find it difficult to say it and find that amusing. Okay, so a shape that looks like that. Basically, it's like a rectangle that's been knocked over a bit. Okay, so what you find is that the opposite sides are the same length as each other, like in a rectangle, but it's just been knocked over a bit, so your angles are not right angles anymore. Okay, what about this one here that we've got in blue? Let's draw around this one. What shape am I drawing here? The clue is, you can have fun with one of these on a windy day. So what shape have I drawn there? It has got a mathematical name, which is its normal name for that shape. And that is a kite. Okay. I know kites come in lots of different shapes, but that shape in maths is called a kite. Okay. Where that length the same as that one and this length the same as this one. Okay, it also has a line of symmetry right down the middle. Okay. All right, now let's look at this red one. Circus performers sometimes use equipment that sounds like this one. I think this one might be a little bit tricky. I'll draw it. Think about circus performers. Think about what you see in terms of equipment. See if you can think of one that sounds like a shape. I'm going to draw that shape again, but a bit more elongated this time. And what I'm going to do is just put a little person on this. Okay, do you know what that's called in the circus? Is this a trapeze? If you'll excuse my drawing. OK, so remember what these do is swing about and you usually have two and the people jump from one to the other and catch each other by the legs and all that sort of thing. OK, so this shape is called a trapezium. All right, so we've got the word trapeze in there. OK, let's look at this green one here. So it says lots of people think this one is called a diamond. OK. So, let me just complete this shape and we'll see if you can remember what it's called. It's not called a diamond. The mathematical name for it isn't diamond. Okay, it's a diamond shape, but that's not its proper name. Okay, starts with R. It's one of those funny words that actually starts with RH. Okay, the H is silent and this shape is called a rhombus. Okay. And the special thing about a rhombus is that all four sides are the same length. So whereas your parallelogram looks like a rectangle that's been pushed over, a rhombus looks like a square that's been pushed over. OK, and then in purple, I've written plus the two we did already look at. So that would be our square and our rectangle and I've written inside the rectangle there are lots of connections that this one shares okay so a rectangle and a square 
have lots of features in common with some of these other quadrilaterals. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look just now at some real life examples. Okay, so what quadrilaterals can you see on this page here? Well, let's have a look. Here, well, it is what it's called. It's a kite. Okay. What about this picture here? It's like a 3D pattern. This is actually from a, a tiling website that I looked at. Okay. But let's have a look at just one of these shapes because they're all the same. Some of them are backwards, some of them are forwards, but they're all the same shape and size. Let's just have a look at one of them here. And let's just draw around one that's in a different position somewhere else so we can see that these are the same shape. Okay, so do you know what those shapes are? Remember, all the sides are the same length because these look like cubes. So that must mean that what we've got here is a rhombus. And you can make some really good 3D pictures just by being careful with your shading as you can see there. Okay. Some of you that were there, um, I can't remember why we didn't have a full class, but um, we used isometric paper to do some 3D drawings like this. Isometric paper has lines going one way and then it's got lines going like that and then lines going the other way to make triangles. So it sort of looks like that except it's obviously measured properly not like the ones I've just done okay so if you wanted to print out some isometric paper and you've got a printer then if you just google that isometric paper you'll get um choices of what to download and print out okay but anyway that's a rhombus then let's have a look here so looking at the top of this rubber here the top of that rubber is a rectangle, okay? If we look down on the rubber at the top of it, or if we coloured that in, as some people like to do with their rubbers and make a mess, if you coloured that in and used it as a stamp, you would have a rectangle, okay? But if you look at the side of the rubber, what's that green shape there that I've just drawn? If you coloured in the side of the rubber and stamped with it, you wouldn't get a rectangle. Oops. You would get a parallelogram. Okay. Here in blue, we've got like a sort of platform that gets winched up. It looks like it's an electronic one because we can see wires. But let's look here. As that moves up and down, we can see these rhombuses again. Okay, because this, um, this length along here is exactly the same as that length there and there and there. And as the angles change and as this, this platform goes up and down, these lengths don't change. It just gets squashed or more stretched out, so it stays as a rhombus. Okay, and then if you imagine looking down onto this desk, I've got a couple of desks that shape in room C3, and what we've got is, so in C3, um, this part of the desk is against the wall, and this part of the desk is the bit that you sit at and those are parallel to each other. So what we can see there, if we look down on top of that desk, is that we've got one of those trapeziums again. Oops, it's not an S, it's a Z. Okay. And now these last two pictures, one of them's a quadrilateral and one of them's not. Um, I was just looking around my kitchen, as you do, um, for different shapes and I got my cheese grater out of the cupboard so this is my hand here in this picture and I did that because I want you to look at what shape we've got here on the face of the cheese grater 
Okay, it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And these two sides are the same length. This cheese grater is in the shape. Each, that face of it is also a trapezium. It's the same shape as the top of the desk, but kind of stretched out. And then I just thought, well, let's look inside the cheese grater because what we've got there is not a quadrilateral because let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we look inside the cheese grater or if we use the bottom of the cheese grater, this bit around the bottom here, if we dip that in paint and stamped with it, we would get a hexagon. So we've got six sides. Now, the hexagon is not a regular one because this side and this side are the same length as each other or same width as each other, but the other sides, they're all a bit narrower. So it's not a regular hexagon. So it is irregular. Okay. So we've uh, looked at a few different kinds of quadrilaterals there. And what we've found out is that actually in life, in our day-to-day -day life, as we look around the place, we do often find quadrilaterals and it is certainly the case that these quadrilaterals are seen sometimes flying away. <laughs> See you later.